So number seven is manufacture a win. And what I mean by manufacture a win is as a coach, you know, you set really ambitious and audacious goals. But sometimes those goals are so outstanding yeah. that you're not it's gonna take a while to get there, right? So just the idea of ending practice with a touchdown, that's manufacturing a win. Or uh. kicking a field goal to end your walkthrough, right? So that, that's giving yourself mental manufacture wins. All right, the next one is evaluate your team relentlessly, and that includes firing yourself if necessary. flying solo today but that's all right we are here with our podcast idea to invention a podcast for inventors and small businesses and usually i have my right hand gal my my lovely wife for 25 years with me sita but if you can see she's not with me she's traveling today on business but that's all right um so we're gonna we're gonna carry on but i have the pleasure of having um as a guest today um, as I was doing my research and my, and, and, and my due diligence on Coach Cam, I was like, oh, yeah, no, this is going to be a good conversation today. So I, I, was, I, got, I got really excited about it. So um, let me introduce uh, to, to some um, Coach Cam, uh, Cameron Campbell, who is affectionately known as Coach Cam, is a servant, a sport enthusiast, and a social entrepreneur. Uh, who has spoken more than a thousand times to various sports. Oh, thank you. So so we've been very blessed family-wise from a health perspective. Um, you know, I heard an interesting thought earlier that, that this was a busier hurricane season than average. You know, I don't, I don't think it is. I mean, I, I've grown up in the Gulf Coast all my life. I just think that for the first time, the nation is still, the world is still. So you're seeing all of these, mm -hmm. like as a point of reference, you know, Hurricane Harvey hit us in 2017. Yeah. Two weeks later, Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico, right? So I, I don't know that this is a, a overly active season. I think this is a season where we're more still than we typically are. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree on that. I mean, even, you know, outside of hurricanes and so forth, just from a life perspective, um, this pandemic has put us in a situation to where it's moved away a lot of, um, I don't want to call it craziness, but or noise or just busyness and forced us to just to be still. And, right. and, and, and as, as by being still, it just made, to your point, made things more prevalent of what's, what's happening in, in the world. And so, yeah, it, it's, it's definitely a, a, an interesting time. So if you could um, give, give our, our audience, because just, just to kind of give you a background of, of what we do, um, my wife and I, uh, my wife is Sita and, and I'm Garrett. And so she, she invented a hair clamp and we ended up having, we, we created a business called Puff Cuff. Um, and it was, it was created based off of a necessity. She, at one point in time, used to relax her hair like most sisters, you know, did back in the day. And that's what they grew up with. Um, and realized that she was having a lot of uh, medical issues. Um, and she was in between touch-ups and realized those medical issue, issues kind of went away. And so then she made the conscious decision. So, you know what? I'm just going to cut all my hair off. And me, her, and my twin boys, we went to the barber shop. We all got a haircut. She got a little, a little tiny, tiny fro. And, um, and from that point, her hair started growing and she started feeling better, no ailments, and realized she wanted to keep her hair, her natural hair. Um, but in that process, uh, came the fact that she couldn't find anything on the market to help style her hair. Everything was mm -hmm. there for straight hair. Um, and so after a little bit of time of searching and figuring out and getting tired of using shoestrings and bootstraps and everything else to tie up her hair and getting headaches, um, she had an idea um, to create a hair clip. And that hair clip was shaped in a circular fashion um, to where it had a little bit of, um, a little bit of teeth that they act like fingers and it was concave for the head so that when you put it in, instead of the hair clamp holding your hair, your hair held the hair clamp in and it removed stress, it removed breakage. It, right, and and, and as, as we started to grow and, and sell from 2014 to now, um, 
we found ourselves in a position to where we reflected on as business owners and starting small, a small business, finding information and getting information about what path to travel, what, what road to go down. Mm. When it comes to building your business, we were finding certain folks were like, well, yeah, you know what? You can have my time for X amount of dollars. We're like, but wait a minute, but it's just, we're, we're not trying to steal your business or anything that has to do with your business. We're just trying to get some information. Um, and we got to a point where we're like, you know what, we're, we, we're going to create an avenue to where we can provide this information that we feel should really be um, for free to uplift other entrepreneurs, other business-minded folks, and, and, and have them be able to come to a single place where they can hear um, attorneys, where they can hear um, financial planners, where they can hear um, commercial real estate agents, where they can hear business uh, coaches, and they can begin to get information and tools to help them build their businesses. And that's why we created this podcast, From Idea to Invention. Um, and so with that in mind of educating, and, and that's why I, I got, when I was reading and doing my due diligence on what you do, I was like, yeah, no, this is, this is right on point. And plus, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an athlete, athlete buff, I'm, you know, football and everything. And just reading your background, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm really excited for the, for the, for the conversation. So if you could, Coach Cam, give us a synopsis of, of, of who you are, your business, in your, in your overall journey so that, so our audience can understand who we got. Yeah, no, I will. And in fact, I appreciate that extended intro to the, the vision of the podcast, because if, if we, if we could earmark 20 minutes at the end, mm -hmm. I literally just jotted two hours ago, a concept for a new course. And I'd like to just kind of put it in the universe, get some, you know, not necessarily yeah. feedback, but just I, I want to run through it. And so I've, I've got a really, again, a, as an innovator, as a creative, you know, this, this is a great opportunity just to kind of put some energy in the space and, oh, yeah. and see if we can be a blessing to people. So, um, you know, my story in a nutshell, Houston guy, always been an athlete. Um, I've always had, and again, I appreciate speaking directly to our culture because not necessarily is there the need to like, less code switch but there's a deeper level of authenticity right <laughs> so i always so i'm not a big tv guy but i always the first time i saw power yeah i identify with the dichotomy of a james st patrick and a ghost yeah like that right yeah. and so as an athlete you know at the university of houston i didn't wear my sweats on the other side of campus right and so they were i was a president of two student organizations i was very involved in the campus there were people who would work with me shoulder to shoulder and had no idea that I was even an athlete. Like this, they just knew on Saturdays and like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was gone. Right. They had no <laughs> idea what I was doing. Right. So, you know, I think that the lens, the athletic lens and the music lens, I'm a big music fan, but, you know, I think that there's such external operational systems that as business owners who, to your point, yeah. you know, finding information. And, and the first thing I say is, you know, all information isn't free. And I get that. But to your point, there should be a cornucopia of baseline information that people can use to get ahead, right? Yeah. So um, the reason I love athletics and music so much is they're external. So we can say, let's take a look at this organizational system. Let's take a look at what makes the Patriots the Patriots. Look, let's take a look at their salary kept the market, how they're able to, you know, year after year, squeeze their salary, you know, overpay for this guy, release this guy, let Tom Brady go, don't miss a step, open salary cap space, bring Cam Newton. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, there's so many exercises that we can learn from an external, external perspective through sports. So I've really used that kind of the combination of the ghost kind of James St. Patrick and ghost kind of dichotomy or, or really just duality is a better word maybe, um, and took it through life. And so kind of like you guys with the invention of your hair clip, you know, I love the disruption model. Um, I love finding opportunities in, you know, old, decrepit, analog spaces. I mean, that's <laughs> the best place to innovate. Yep. Um, I also think that we as people of color have to bring our authentic version of ourselves to the table. And that's something that it took me a very long time to find. And in fact, in transparency, I'm just finishing like a rebrand of, of my brand, my personal brand. 
And I brought three, you know, brand consultants in and all of them said the same thing, which is, you know, that's kind of what you want to hear. That means that, you know, there's some consistency there. All of them said, like, you're such an interesting person. You know, why is, why, why is your brand so neutral? Mm. And you kind of go back to that James St. Patrick versus ghost. And so it's like, yeah, you know, I can't show too much ghost in my James St. Patrick, you know what I mean? Because that's what you've been trained to do all your life as as flipping that script on over here this is who i this may be your authentic right. self right and when you walk across, as you mentioned when you walk across campus you have to sh- you you were under the impression and the thought through how you were raised that you have to show this side of you in, in order exactly. in order to succeed yeah so some folks don't understand that dichotomy at all yeah, and, and it's tough, and it, it's a tough. There is a threshold of, um, there's a threshold of. If you've ever read the book The Alchemist, right? And so when he makes it past, the you know he's going through the sands of the deserts in Egypt, and he passes this threshold of concern and care about his thoughts mm-hmm. into the willingness to step into his manifested version of himself. Like whenever you cross that threshold. So, so for me, it was, you know, my, my logo, my brandy logo was black with a little bit of silver. It kind of, it was just safe. I mean, it it didn't, it, it, it didn't threaten you when you scrolled, Mm. but it didn't make you stop scrolling. Right. And so, you know, there is, and I, I don't mean just in my personal brand, I mean like in, in your business, right? Because ultimately for small business owners, as much as you may try to to stop the drip, like a part of you, your essence drips into your business. Yeah. And so, you know, it just was for me, like I got to that threshold of, I don't, it was never that I wanted to be liked or, but as a male, as a big black male, yeah. you, you've always had this non-threatening space you have to keep yourself in. And I've got to that point to where it's like, this is authentically me. Um, and this is what you got. And so, yes, I collect watches. Yes, I enjoy champagne a couple of nights a week. I smoke cigars on Sundays. Yeah. I'm a Texan. I drive a Ford. I shoot <laughs> guns. You know what I mean? So it's like, like right. this is who I am. Yeah. And so, you know, what it does for me, and when you talk about like brand and and product and merchandise and just creating, you know, they, they say your your vibe attracts your tribe, right? And so instead of having this like super safe, you know, kind of, Boy Scouts honor thing. Yeah, it's like, look, if you enjoy, you know, reading a book a week, if you get up at four o'clock in the morning and start your day, if you enjoy, like I've got now, um, I do enjoy spirits, and so I kind of went from like mixing my drinks to like I'm a mixologist. I got a few drinks I make in house. Yeah, but now I'm at a point in my diet and my workout where it's like, yeah, I may make like a margarita with a special you know topper on it yeah but what if i what if i sit my vodka in strawberries for two weeks Mm. or or grapes or blueberries right and so what it turns into is you know every couple of nights i get to go pinch off a little treat (laughs) of a zero calorie (laughs) zero sugar zero carb yeah right and so it's like yes is it syrupy like ciroc or any not picking on ciroc but is it syrupy like any flavor of vodka yeah no does it taste like straight alcohol? No, it has, it does have a squeeze of, you know, you can taste That's the fruit, fruit in it. Yeah. And it's like, it's not that. So, so it, it became like that version of, I've got to go back in all of my businesses and rebrush, repaint everything that I've created because it had a coat of safety, which that safety was indirectly in authenticity. And so I'm just re I'm literally rebrushing everything with, you know, a deeper, authentic version of myself, which as a person who is extroverted, but but relatively introverted when it comes to your private space, yeah, there is that, that line of like, you know, I kept this because it's me, but I can't be committed to sharing my gift with the world if I'm holding back. So was, I mean, was there a point or is there a point, because you're in it, where you had a sense of hesitation of doing that, of bringing that authentic, right? I mean, because I, mean, I would imagine you would have to have had a moment of, okay, I, for my business, for me to bring my authentic self, you have to have thought, okay, well, is this going impo- to impact my bottom line, 
right, in, in, in the growth and in, in where I want to take my business. So, so did you wrestle with that at all? Yeah, I, I, wrestle, I wrestle with it every day, right? So, like, again, like the idea, it's 75 here in Houston. It's, you know, like chilly by Texas standards. <laughs> right, <laughs> right 75, that's good. <laughs> Man, the second I could put, I guess, hoodie is pre-hoodie season, yeah, right? So, yeah. like, again, perfect example. So I understand this is a podcast for professionals. I understand the demographics of it, the psychographs of the people who listen. You know, yes, I could put on a blazer and a shirt un- untied, or it's like, you know, pre regardless of COVID and where we are, yeah. like, you know, as far as mobility, like what would what would Coach Cam t- typically be wearing on a seventy five degree day? A hoodie, a hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so it's like, yes, I've got a tuxedo here and a jacket here right, and a right. coat. Yeah, I've got those things. I wear those things sometimes. But you know, when you wake up today and today is hoodies and Jordan Day, put on hoodies and Jordan, and, and it, it's. Um, it, you, you do have to retrain yourself. And I will say this, um, last, uh, so spring of 2019, I hit this, you know, a, a non-Christian or non-believer of anything would say what I hit was my 10,000 hours mm-hmm. and I truly achieved mastery as a person of faith. I, it was the first time that I ever made, I ever prayed an abundance prayer. Now I'm, I'm, I'm trying to choose my words carefully because yeah. um, my mom jokes that she's a, a Catholic Baptist, right? So like I didn't, <laughs> we didn't grow up like Lord bless us with a house. And Lord right, bless right. Us, right. It was just like, make it through the day. And just give us enough to make it through the day. So, so last, uh, last, last spring, um, it's pre Lent season, so it's like maybe February, and I'm yeah. kind of wrapping my head around what I want to give up for Lent. And yeah. I take Lent really serious. It, it's an uncomfortable season, but it's supposed to be uncomfortable, yeah. right? And so, for the first time, or that I can think of, I'll say it's the first time I prayed for for overflow. Like mm. I, I've never been like an overflow prayer. That's just not where my kind of spiritual right. thing is, you know? Yeah, yeah, and um, you'll appreciate this story. So I'm praying for overflow. I mean, I pray for abundance. I'm not quite comfortable with it. It's, it's, it's out of my zone. And so the next day I'm, I'm headed to the gym. That's what, kind of my time with God. And the next day I just felt the impression of, you know, like, okay, like I'm, I'm here, I'm here for everything you want. Yeah. Like, cool. Like, I don't know why you haven't asked for more you know <laughs> up until like, now, but <laughs> cool. Yeah, I, I'm here. Cool. And that felt good. So the next day, I'm like, okay, so what do I need to prepare to sacrifice for Lent? Um, and I typically, I, I, for the past five years, it's always been something with my diet. So yeah. I'll take meat out, I'll go pescatarian, I'll go plant-based, I'll just something, you know, just there. Yeah. And so, uh, so I'm driving, and like this little, little itty-bitty idea was like, <laughs> give up alcohol. I was like, boy, you tripping. <laughs> who are you talking to? <laughs> who are you talking to? This is a guy who, who, who has strawberries and vodka right. in, like, in his face now, right? <laughs> so I'm like, man, you play too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even, that was a bad idea. That wasn't God. That was Cam. You know what I'm saying? Like, God wouldn't tell me to do that. Why would you do that? So, like, that day, I just kind of like wrestled with it, not taking it too serious, but just like wrestling with it. And then the next morning, um, it was like, okay, so what you gonna do? Right. Yeah. It was kind of like the impression on me. And I was like, you know what? If if you're if you're presenting a challenge and your first response is to defer that challenge, yeah. that's a challenge you need to take on. Yeah. Like like that's a challenge. And you know, I did it. I mean, again, I, I it was not hard to do. I think I think the one thing I realized was how frequently, how easy it is to drink socially, right? So yeah. You're at a game this day, you're at a concert, you know, friends are over, cheese and cracker, you know, just like, so before you know it, it's like, wow, like, it's not that I even drink a lot. There's just so many opportunities to drink. <laughs> to drink, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so that was the beginning of like, seeking abundance from God 
And I understood, obviously, that there is some type of sacrament or a betterment that should come with that, right? So it's not just being opportunistic, but then it kind of became like, well, what, what do you really want? Mm. Like, is is what you've been wanting, and not just from a secular money thing. I mean, a lot right. of what I do when I talk about one is in the in the community and from a philanthropic perspective. But it's like as bold as you think you are, yeah. and as big time as you think your dreams are all that exercise in the truck on the way to church taught I me mean, on the way to the gym taught you was you've been playing small ball this whole time yeah this whole time and so you know wh- one of the things that i excuse me declare that i wanted was you know to put the james st patrick and the ghost down because it's tiring like i'm tired of speaking at this dinner yeah. This day and having to work, and you can, I'm sure you can relate to this as a black man, right? But like, is this shirt too loud? Does it right. go with this? Not even matching, but like, is this green tie too aggressive with this hue? Of yeah. Gray. Yeah. Right. It's just like, no, I want to wear <laughs> some like pink pants today, and I'm going to wear, you know, like just like that's who I am. And, right. And when you when you book me, because I, I, although I have been reserved, I've been authentic the entire time. This is what you get. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I may be at a country club full of like stuffy conservatives and I I, I may be in a red blazer with a white bow tie. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. If that's, what, if that's what I'm rocking today. Yeah. And so, um, you know, being able to put down Ghost and James free liberated me to just be me all day, like all day. And it, it, it's, uh, you know, from a creative standpoint, it, it is the freest I've ever felt in my life. So, and, and that, that, that's a, a good segue into a, a question I have in regards to your path, right? Because um, I, I would imagine, com- so coming out of college, right, you, you had in mind the path that you wanted to go and, and I, I want to understand because to me it's 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 just it's just really interesting to where you're at now and you're you're re-evolving yourself um, from where you came from. So because I just want to understand. So when you started, you're you know wanting to be Coach Cam in essence, and 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 do the business development and, and the speaking and so forth. Did you have any exp- any thought that it would kind of be what it is now and your transformation would have happened the way it's happened. Help me understand how that. So what I'd say is I spent my twenties like doing God's work. Right. And so knowing that I need to work in areas that I'm good at, but I mean, I I spent really most of my twenties not making much money, but like checking off, uh, not in a transactional way, but like, so I, I worked so my, I worked in the, in the NFL in the front office for a small amount of time. I coached in, in inner city Houston. Yeah. I worked nonprofit. That's when I first started coaching. I started my first business. So I spent my twenties not making much money, but also, you know, remaining deeply curious. Um, and really I'd say like harvesting my skill set. When I talk to coaches, you know, there's so many, I mean, even, you know, you guys in, in, in Georgia, yeah. you know, a, a powerhouse head coach could easily run a small to mid-sized uh, business yep. easily. Right. So if you have the leadership skills, you're able to develop talent, yep. you're managing, you know, here in, in Houston, you manage a multi-million dollar budget between the school budget, what you fundraise and your yeah. booster club, you're raising north of a million dollar budget, yeah. manage a budget. Right. So you know how to manage budgets. You know how to develop talent. You know how to set expectations. You know how to, you know, create team chemistry. You know how to evaluate chemi- um, team um, players and develop. Yeah. And then ultimately, you know how to keep your eyes. Like, that is the ingredient for running a, a small to mid-sized business. And so, you know, what I spent most of my 20s doing was developing those skills. And I got, there are times when I got too close to the pay, to the groundstone where you get stuck in the job. Mm-hmm. Not realizing what a career is, but ultimately not realizing, realizing what a skill set is. Yeah, and you got to take a step back and say, "Well, wait a minute. I, I've spent ten years developing these skills and these talents. 
you know, again, getting back to that mastery thing, I'm pretty good at this, 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 and that. Since yeah. I spent, like I say, my early 30s um, cashing in on the skills that I developed from an entrepreneurial perspective and also, you know, from a traditional job perspective. And I'm always kind of going back to the creative side. I say I'm like, a, I'm a creative in the entrepreneur's body. Um, the last coaching job I took, uh, I almost didn't take because the idea of being one place yeah. for eight hours as a coach, 14 <laughs> hours, right? So so during season, you get in the campus at seven, you're not leaving till nine. Yeah. Right. And so and I and I, I love the game, right? So it's not even like a passion. It's like, can I be one place for 10 hours? Yeah. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not. And so um, you know, so so I spent you know, I'd say my mid, my early to mid thirties, cashing in on that skill set. I transitioned rather unceremoniously out of coaching. The the position was closed. Um, did a very good job as head coach, athletic director. Yeah, we had ten varsity programs. Eight of them were postseason eligible. Um, but the school itself was just like, hey, you've done a great job, but we're going to shift to be a more of an academic space, and so we're going to put the AD role as within the counselor suite. You uh-huh. can stay in coach and coach and teach PE. And for me, it was like what felt like a stripe was literally like the shackles being broken. Mm. Right. And so the moment she said PE, I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> That's not what you, I signed up for. <laughs> right. You don't pay me this much money. And it's not what I signed up for to blow my whistle at lunch duty. Right. So, you know, so I hate that, you know, this has come to an end, but. It was the most. It was the biggest blessing in my life. Biggest blessing in my life. Man, you know what? And and I can relate to that that story because I had spent twenty two plus years in corporate America. Um, um, I have a, a an IT an engineering background, and I was was at at Bank of America, um, and had a portfolio, a 50, $54 million portfolio, controlled all infrastructure for our call centers globally. And, um, and it was literally in 2017, Father's Day weekend, where I got my blessing. Because I had prayed for, um, I, I either need, needed to change organizations within Bank of America or I needed to find another financial institution where I could um, be, you know, increase in in level and in in job and and in scope, Um, or I could come and be full-time as a CEO for Puffco. And just like, you know, you had no control over (laughs) what they were going to do at at the school that you were at, I had no control over what was going to happen. God literally removed the first two things and mm. it was, it became so clear and prevalent. No, this is where you need to be. And the moment that that happened and I accepted that, um, and my wife and I, we sat and we prayed and said, okay, God, if this is where you want us to go, we're all in literally year after year, the advancement of, of, of what the company was. And, and it was, it was literally beyond, beyond my control. And so, yeah, no, I can completely relate to when you say, man, that, that was the blessing to, to push me to where I, I was supposed to go. One, one of the, uh, thank you for sharing that. That, that. That's a testimony, by the way. Like, don't, I think as sometimes we downplay our testimonies, like, yeah. like that is a big part of your testimony. So thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Um, I am a very, I try to be very in tune with my ego and yeah. understand what are ego moves and what aren't ego moves. And, and, and if I make an ego move, like be okay with it, right? Like, <laughs> okay, this is the ego move I'm going to do. Yeah. Cool. So if it doesn't go as planned, I can't be surprised. It was an ego move, right? Mm-hmm. One of my ego moves, bro, is to send when I get to my F you money number, which, you know, I, I, we can talk about in a minute, but when I get to my F you money number, it's to just send a beautiful floor arrangement. No salt, no shade, but it's like 
thank you for firing me. <laughs> like, <laughs> thank you. I am blessed on blessed on blessed. I would not be here if you would not have relieved me of my duties. Like, I cannot thank you enough. And I don't, again, I don't mean that I'm, I'm joking saying it, but it's like, no, thank you for that. I yeah. needed that. Man, okay. See, now you, you done brought up the FU money. I need to understand what, <laughs> what that is. But I want to, oh, but, but wait, wait, yeah. but so, so keep that. But I want to ask you this okay. question though, right? Because we have, we have folks who, who listen to our podcast, who may be at a moment of decision of, do I make, do I make that jump? Do I, how, as a coach, how would you coach somebody to make that decision to, 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 to go yeah. into what may, they may have seemed or thought for last few, you know, years, man, that's just too tough. That's just too risky of a move for me to go out on my own. Or that's just too risky of a move for me to, to, to jump into consulting and, and do what I, what I feel God wants me to do. How would you coach them to make that decision? Yeah. So the first thing I say is, um, let, let's 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 set a play clock right so let's decide by this day we're going to make a choice mm. right because you, you can push that choice out for months and the years and the bear markets and the bull markets and the <laughs> you know COVID 22 right yeah so like, like right. pull the trigger so let's, let's set let's set a play clock the, so reverse engineering the first thing i say is you know you've got to ask yourself are you an entrepreneur are you mm. a quasi-preneur or are you, you know, a high, a high performance professional? And there's nothing wrong with no matter where you end up, right? So we live in, um, you know, everything cycles. So five years ago, it was engineering, engineering, IT, yeah. IT, 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 right? And it's like, so now entrepreneur, and it's like, dude, it's, it's going to be off of entrepreneur. Like entrepreneurship is going to be unsexy in like a year and a half. Yeah. And it's going to be something else, right? And so, you know, don't feel the community pressure a bit, it's not for everybody, right? So if you can wrap your head around closing a, you know, three hundred thousand dollar deal and paying everybody else first, mm -hmm. and so while in a best case scenario you may get the biggest slice, yeah, all things being fair, you may not get any slice. That's the truth, <laughs> right? So it's like, so if you can wrap your head around that, that's a good sign. If me saying that made you squirm, this ain't for you, which right. is okay. Yeah. So then you go like to the what I call the quasipreneur, and a quasipreneur, I say like, all lovingly, like so I don't want people to take this out of context. If you own a subway franchise, you are not an entrepreneur. You're a quasipreneur, right? So you've licensed out, you have a franchise agreement or whatever yeah. terms you worked out with Sonic, with Wingstop, with mm -hmm. Subway, whatever, like Quiznos, whatever, right? So not mad at that. The telltale sign between an entrepreneur and a quasipreneur is this. If the chicken bacon club is the number one selling sandwich in your store <laughs> and you have full control over that sandwich, congratulations, you're an entrepreneur. Yep. If you franchise out a Subway and tomorrow Subway takes that sandwich off the menu, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> You're not an entrepreneur. You, right. don't, you can't. You don't make every single decision. Which again, that's okay that's because right. also, you know, you're taking a lot of the risk. Subway's taking some risk too. Yeah. Right. And so, in that same situation, if you take the the sandwich off your menu instantly, your number is plummet. Right. Right. In that situation with Subway, they're feeling the the, the pain of that before you feel it. Right. Even though it may, you may feel it more directly, they're feeling it from around the nation or the region or however they uh -huh. have this stuff broken down. Right. So. You know, so you're going to feel it. They're going to feel it. But ultimately, it's in their best interest for you to be healthy. So they're going to figure out how to help you get out of your bad situation as far as sales for that sandwich. That's a quasipreneur. The high power professional is the one person I think so many people just crap on, honestly, because the quasipreneur and the entrepreneur need that CEO to run their company. Yeah. There are very few times that you get, uh, you know, a Zuckerberg, a Steve Cook, um, um, I'm sorry, Steve Jobs, uh, a Tim Cook, who can do both, mm -hmm. right? Even Tim Cook didn't originate, right? He came behind Steve Jobs. Yep. So, you know, the idea that we have these 
you know, like a dozen unicorns, the Elon Musk. We've got these unicorns on the right. shelf yeah. because they're unicorns, <laughs> right? Like, like most people either create the business and have someone else run it or they run the business that somebody else That's created. created. Yep. So the idea that the entrepreneur is here, the quasipreneur is here, and the high power professional is here, you know, the high power mm. professional actually is just as valuable because both of these guys over here need him. And yeah. so, you know, so to answer your question, you know, to condense it, you got to figure out which one of those three you are, right? You've established your shot clock. Now it's time to, you know, kind of upside down the puzzle and put the puzzle together of your skill set and decide like, what am I naturally good at and what do mm. I naturally suck at? And then from there, that should open up your pathway into, you know, which direction you should go if it's even time for you to make a move. Yeah, no, that that's, that's good stuff because, um, Ha- having folks take the time and, and effort to sit and really do a self-reflection of what they are, re- what their lane is. Um, because some folks can be fooled to think that their lane is something else just because they've been working in it forever, but that might not really be their lane. So yeah, to your point, you, they need to really sit down and, and I, I like to tell folks, you know what, you need to write down and, and, and make it tangible of, of, of what, what your skill set is, what you enjoy to do, what your passion is. So then that way, when you are done with that exercise, I firmly believe that it's going to jump out at you. Of, of oh, it's it's going to be crystal clear. Yeah. yeah. The direction you need to go is crystal clear. And in fact, I talk about that in the course. You know, even, even, my, even my speaking business, great example. So I've been speaking for uh, a little over a dozen years. I've spoken everywhere from the Falcons to uh, the Dolphins. I've done the NBA Combine, spoken at the Super Bowl, Final Four. I, I've, you know, I've done a lot of speaking. But then you take a second and say, okay, well, you've done so much, and it's a natural skill set that you have this high level of proficiency. Yeah. Well, what else can you add to that, right? So how do you how do you scale? the impact and going back to the rebranding, how do you, how do you scale giving more of coach cam, not from a capitalistic perspective, but from a ecosystem perspective, right? So how do I give people more of the gift that I have to give? Yeah. And so that's when the idea, and I've typically worked in the um, um, service space, not as much the product space. So I wrote my first book last year and you know, it, it does well. I sold, I, I think I'm, I'm almost at 5,700 copies. Okay. Um, I'm self-published. And so I'm like, that's, that's those good. are pretty yeah. good numbers, yeah. you know, to be moved, to be moving solo. Right. And so I'm coming off the book tour. In fact, I was in, I was, I think I did like Atlanta, Charlotte. I did the shit in the circuit. It's kind of through the South. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> and so, um, at every stop, yeah, somebody would ask me, how do you do so much? Like you got a construction company and you have these, you know, Philanthropic community projects and you know family life and work and you know you have hobbies you play golf you, I'm I'm like learning French right now during yeah. COVID so you know how do you uh, do this stuff and you know I I didn't have a very good answer other than I win the first quarter of my day I get up at four o'clock I have a very consistent routine that I use to to kind of you know get me through my day and. I get back to my desk. I'm talking with my team. We're kind of debriefing on the year, setting goals for 2020. And, you know, we look at this film and it's like, you may have something here like, like this. There may be, again, where old coach Cam is playing the safe to the cuff. Mm-hmm. You may have, you may have developed a product that you need to get to the world through authentically being you. Right. So this idea of winning the first quarter of your day, like we need to get this in the hands of our clients that, that we're consulting yeah. and work for. And so I took like a case, like a sample study, about a half a dozen clients and just took them through this curriculum. I'm literally I literally mapped out what I do every day from four o'clock to eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And, and you know, put some curriculum behind it and was like, execute these exercises. And then we talk next week. Let's check back in. When I tell you, like, the results were like that. It, so it, it was almost like going to your doctor and your doctor saying, I'll tell you what, stop drinking soda, drink water for a week and come back and tell me how you feel. Yeah. 
like like that kind of change. Yeah. So next week they're like, oh my God, I mean, yeah, the first day I was groggy, but I had so much clarity and I was quiet. I could get my email. I mean, just like just the the, the things that your body does when you go from soda to water. I mean, that's mm-hmm. literally what you're doing. Yeah. Right. So we sit back for like two weeks and we're like, okay, so we, you know, kind of take those people down a course. And they were honestly, you know, inadvertent guinea pigs <laughs> for for this course. And so now it's like mid-January and we're sitting around like we've got to get this. So it's almost like, you know, you've got to get this to everybody. Yeah. Right. So yeah. how do we get this to how do we scale this? And and as a creator, as as an innovative person, systems and processes are not my strength. Mm-hmm. But because I'm so competitive, I've spent like the last year and a half, almost two, just in the system and process space. And so measure what matters, OKRs, yeah. KPI. I mean, mm-hmm. just like just I've been in it. And it's 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 almost like it's given me a superpower from the perspective of, you know, I've got this really good dish in, as a creative. Yeah. But the organization of scale is like the Zatarans on top. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like now it's really real good, good. right? Yeah. So we, I started writing the course, um, the curriculum for the course, and I actually was set to film it on the very first day of COVID, that March 13th, ah, March, when okay. COVID hit. And so you know, got it out, got it to the streets. It's doing very well. So we have a hard release for it, November 3rd. Um, gotcha. But I released it about a month ago, and so it's called "When the First Quarter of Your Day." A playbook for wealth, health, and success. And I'll, um, I'll get you a copy of it so you can check it out. I appreciate it. Love to that. get your feedback on it. And so, you know, what happens is, from a business standpoint, even as I tell this story, it's like, yeah, but if I weren't, if I did not remain curious, I'd still just be a speaker. Yeah. Right. And, and I wouldn't have written a book. I wouldn't have created the course. I created a digital mag. So, so during COVID, I'm a super competitive person, if you can't tell. But during <laughs> COVID. I said to myself, you know, you've got the same 24 hours as whoever fill in the blank is. And I sometimes stay in my lane so much that I don't do a good job of understanding who my competitors are. I just, oh. I'm just working. I'm just running my race. Right. right so, right. so you kind of throw out like Tim Robbins. Right? I mean, if everybody knows who, or, or what's his name? Oh, Tony, Tony Robbins, Tony, Tony Robbins. Robbins. Yeah. You know the guy's name. So, um, I'm like, okay, Tony Robbins has 24 hours. He may be able to access his staff remotely, but I bet you he's not going to outcreate me. I bet you he's not going to create more content than I am. I bet you he's not going to stay, you know, relevant and grow his business and grow yeah. his, right? So before you know it, it became this like, you know, I competed so toughly against myself for years that COVID gave me the chance to kind of like pick my head up and figure out who I was going to beat. And mm-hmm. so for me, respectfully, it, w- it was him, right? And so it's like, okay, I'm going to put this course out and I'm going to have it be successful and I'm going to get over the 5,000 sold benchmark for my book and I'm going to learn French. And, you know, I like to pick up the guitar if, once I kind of master French, but yeah. it's like, who who says I've got to run at whoever's race, whoever's pace? Right. Um, so by the time we come out of COVID, let's see who's been, who got further ahead, me or that guy. Uh. And that's just... The energy I've been on since COVID, I think the COVID is such a blessing. Um, you know, we're such a prosperous country that you do, although our culture doesn't talk much about us being entitled, yeah. as a universal American culture, we live in such a prosperous space that six months of hardship has everybody screaming, uncle. And it's like, oh, you must never been broke before. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Your entitlement no, you is showing, <laughs> showing so tough. Can you? Yeah, it's like no, you just ain't never had no, you know what I'm saying, food stamps before. That's all right. That is. You, 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 you never had, you had that block of cheese. You, you, you know exactly, exactly, <laughs> so, exactly. Man, so how yeah. um, we still we look, we still gonna get back to that fu money though, because I want to talk about hmm. that and the, the last few moments of of the idea that you wanted to talk through, but yeah, um, as you've been growing because. I mean, you you said people every when you were doing your your chitlin circuit that fo- folks was asking you, man, how are you doing everything? And as I was doing my research, I'm like, okay, you got courses, you have your your the ways of of, of interacting with you, your book, the the Crown and Glory magazine, and and you're speaking, and, and you're just yeah, dude, you you got a lot of a lot of irons in the fire. 
Um, but in order for you to do all of that, you have to have worked and formulated a, a good team around you to allow you to do that. Yes. What, what was your approach in building that team? Because see, see the, the fundamentals that, that I'm sure you're about to share, other entrepreneurs or small business or, or consultants need to understand how to think through and focus on how to build that surrounding team to ensure to allow them to do all the things that they're going to need to do as an entrepreneur. Yeah. So, so the first thing I say is one of my natural skill sets is team building. Yeah. Right. And so um, it, it does bode well for what I do, but it's something I naturally do well. And I say the first thing in team building is um, create an amazingly beautiful uh, desired reality right and so i don't mean like you know bamboozle folks but i mean like what is your <laughs> I, if everything goes right yeah what does this organization look like mm. um so that's one two put yourself at the very back of it right and so i, I try to use as many analogies as i can i'm a big reader so i, I reference um a few different things but what made the wizard of oz go was the wizard behind the behind the curtain, right? Yeah. So you didn't see the wizard. The, the Wizard of Oz was such a majestical place. Yeah. But the wizard was behind the curtain. He didn't he didn't see the majesty. He worked it. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're a part of the Coach Cam team, mm. I I'm here. Like I'm not so so again, the personal brand my personal brand may be up front. Yeah. Cam Cam is here. Right. So like if if my copywriter doesn't have everything they need if my social media guy doesn't have what he needs if my sales guy doesn't have this if if you know whatever 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 i'm ultimately this goes back to servant leadership my job is to get to the back of the bus yeah and push the bus yeah right so again like i may be the hood ornament like you're selling me as a product as a brand uh -huh. this thing is not about it's not about me like like it is about creating a place where we get to work hard we get to play hard we typically take um, semi-annual team retreats and we'll go to Vegas or we'll go to, yeah. you know, wherever it just, you know, like enjoy success as a team. People work harder for the team. You, you know, the idea of playing for coach, nobody plays for the coach. No. Like you play for the team. So yeah. you've got to create such an environment that people just love to be around it. And I think, uh, you know, three words that ego trips us up with that are so beautiful is – I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, how, how are we going to hit this month's, you know, quarterly projected or, or must project? I don't know. What, what chemical epoxy do we need to get this flooring up so we can put the wood down? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so instead of, instead of having the false bravado of, I know everything, I'm quick to tell you, I know what I know, what I don't know. I don't know, but there's nothing you can't learn. Right. Right. You, can, you can teach almost everything, but you can a person can learn everything. So I don't know, but but we can figure out how to find a solution. And I think that humility, um, you know, sets everyone at ease, especially I, I've got some interns, you know, some college kids. Yeah. And, you know, they try to be perfect. And it's like, dude, you're literally half my age. I know you <laughs> don't know. <laughs> right. Like, but I want you to figure out how to learn. How learn. And I think that's another big key. Man, oh, that is yeah, you, you, yeah, you, you, you said a lot, and, and and your your number two about putting yourself at the end, um, and really living into and leaning into uh, servant leadership, um, and having a sense of humility that is it is not about you, and that it's 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 about the the, the bigger that there's a bigger picture, a, a bigger thing at play that's happening. And it, it, just for example, I um. We're in the process of of, of uh, hiring a warehouse manager for our company, and um, I was talking to uh, a candidate uh, yesterday, and um, he was he was like, "Well, what, what do you?" He's like, "What do you? What are you looking for? Wh who? What will really make you say, yeah, that that's the person?" And I said, "You know what? Um." I need someone that understands that it is not about him or her um, that understands that 
we as a company, as, as, we, begin, as we formulated our mission and our vision, and that it, it, is, it is literally beyond the four walls and the walls of this physical location and what we want to do globally and outside of this, you have to be able to come in and, 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 and humbly just be like, yes, it's not about me. Yeah, I'm here to do a job, but it's not about me. It's about the bigger, the bigger thing. And, um, and he was like, oh, I'm like, yeah. I, I said, it's, I, said I, you know, I, I practice servant leadership. And, and when I'm working with someone, they're, if, 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 they are, if they're getting the impression that there's an air of coming off of me, that I'm such and such boss, then I'm doing something wrong because that's, right. that's not what it's supposed to be. Or, or I, I feel I fail to be transparent enough for you to see who I truly am. Yes. Right. And, and so what, what I say to that is, and so again, like I am, I, I embrace, I think, the artist side of me. Yeah. You know, in the last year, really writing the book, that's what did it. And so it's like, you know, yes, you know, there is there are hard skills and whatever, but you know, I really think that when you get like right above Chick Fil A Fry Chef. Like, like as far as like <laughs> responsibility. Yeah. You've got to have a mindset that you're an artist. Right. So like, like, so for example, you know, hiring a warehouse manager means again, you have this skill set. You pay attention to detail. You know, 1% may not sound like a lot. 1% is a humongous amount. So yeah. you've got to be like a pencil pushing accurate mm-hmm. round down, not up kind of right. mind frame. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, you've got to physically be feeling like Michelangelo drawing on the wall. So when you're in your spreadsheet is when you should be in sublime. You should be no happier yes. than, than indexing and analyzing numbers. Like, like you shouldn't, you should see my call and be like, but I'm in my spreadsheet. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like this is, this is, this is, this is my art. Yeah. And you know, it, it is a atypical ideology, but if you can't, if you can't see it that way and adapt to that work culture, you can't work for me. Right. Or you can't work with me. And so like, yeah, going back to a project manager on a new construction project that hopefully we get awarded on Monday, you know, it took him years to understand, you know, number one, it's my job to get you everything you need. So, you know, the question you should not ask me is how do I do this? The question maybe is how do I find the answer? Mm -hmm. But more importantly, here's what I need to do my job. Cool. But then the idea of, you know, I'm not asking you, you're not a CFO. You know, your job is is concrete slabs, wood, grass, right? When you put two pieces of sod together, if you don't step back and appreciate what you just did, that's not it, right? And so, yes, you may bleed into 10 hours overtime in the week, or, you know, mm-hmm. we may have to figure out how to make some paint stretch somewhere right. else. Right. But if, if, if at the end of, of a half a day's work, when you're eating your lunch, if you aren't basking in what you just created, yes. you're not, you're not the right fit for this team. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause you're, and, you're, and you're not, you're not in your right spot where you're supposed to be. You're not, you're not in your right spot. And so, so and I say the fry chef thing jokingly because you know, there are so many people who work in food service or whatever yeah. who, you know, who are putting a pickle on the Chick-fil-A sandwich who should be who should be frothing off the top of a of a of a of a, of a, of a uh, what's the banana foster. Right. Yeah. So like so so you putting that pickle and butter on that sandwich <laughs> gives you no more pleasure, gives you just as much pleasure as, you know, creating a, a fine, fine, you know, five star dish Michelin meal yeah. like it's just you haven't had that opportunity to get here yet but you know again if if, if this isn't where you're supposed to be then either let's find a place for you you know within the organization or find somewhere else but you should enjoy the art you make you should be proud of the art you make yeah yeah uh, okay so let's 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 man that's some good stuff let's get to your f you money I, I when you made that statement i was like okay i need to hear what that is and then, Help me understand <laughs> where you at with that. Right. So so the first thing I'll say is as a coach, and this applies to business as well, there are no new schemes. There, there are no, you know, the four two five, the three four defense, yep. the nickel defense, the eagle. 
you know, the, you may move a safety over a tight mm-hmm. end and call it something else. It's still a nickel defense, right? right? So, um, I, I'm definitely not taking credit for fu money. It, it uh, I heard it from a guy named Jim Collins. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Fire community. Um, financially independent, retire early. Have you have you heard? No, of that I've group? heard that. But I'm gonna find out. So though. it's 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 a subset of millennials who have a goal of saving half of what they earn so they can retire twice as fast. Hmm. It, it's very it's very aggressive. I use a bit of it like in my in my wealth strategy. Yeah. Um I like I said, I, I like I like champagne too much to be <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like like whatever, right? So so the so the idea of F, so so the idea of financial independence by the fire community's definition is I can wake up tomorrow and not go to work because I've saved twenty five X what I need to live for the rest of my life. Ah. Right. And so that that's that's FI, F I or financially independent or fire. Yeah. Financially independent retire early. Then you've got your, you know, paycheck to paycheck, hand to mouth. And again, like it's not about it's just like going to the gym. Nobody cares where you start. We are all out of shape when mm-hmm. we started, right? But it's like acknowledging I need to go into the gym. So yeah. paycheck to paycheck is here. Fire is here. Your F you money is like here, right? So you could not go back to that job, but maybe you don't have enough to sustain to get to fire or or to be fi. Yeah. But when you get to your F well, when you get to your F you money, you don't take meetings you don't want to take. You don't go you don't yeah. take appointments you don't want to take. You turn down clients that aren't the right fit. You fire clients. If you, you know, want to jump and play golf for three days, you do. You extend the vacation a day. Yeah. It's just, you know, it, it's the it's the difference. Um it's in its essence, F you money is the prequel to compounding right and, and compounding I, I feel like is so uh, hmm. overused right so so at the def- I define compounding as consistency plus momentum right that's that's what co- yeah. compounding is from from money to anything right like compounding is a consistent momentum and and um, and um, and focus right to get to where you need to get to so the idea of getting to FU money, and everybody has their own FU money number. You kind of figure out what that – you figure out the life you want to live yeah. at its best case, right? So, like, all the, you know, trips you want, all the toys, all the – I like that, all that stuff. And then you multiply that number times 10, right, or maybe times 12 for a little allotment. And so, you know, let's just say that number is $100,000, a year, mm-hmm. right? This is to keep numbers simple. So yeah, I know that for me to live the best version of my life, my kids are going to whatever school they want to go to. All I got a chef, all that kind of stuff, whatever you want. Yeah. If that number is a hundred thousand, then you've got to get to 10 X theoretically 10 X that number yep. and then live off of the 10% return that you're investing. That's when you've reached a few money. Yeah. Right. So, so in that example, theoretically, um, you know, and again, like a hundred thousand dollars is a, a nice living. I don't know if that's like, you know, going to the Super Bowl, but whatever. <laughs> just just to keep number simple. Yeah. So if if the best life you can live, you could get that number to a hundred thousand dollars. If you figure out how to ten x a hundred thousand, that's a million. Well, so once you have that million, you're not living off that million. Right. You're investing that million, and you're living off the ten percent yield that you get. And that's kind of why I said twelve, because mm-hmm. obviously when in you know, you know, bear markets like this, you right? Know, that the 10 is probably more like seven, but right. you know, all things being fair, if you can find a space where you can get a 10 X return, which doesn't just have to be the stock market, it can be launching new businesses. Right. So, yeah. you know, again, you talk about y'all's business If the next bit, you know, the next version of it is the baby cuff, right. Right. It was a spinoff company. Yeah. Then it's like, yes, that, that is another machine to get you to your F you money. And once you get to 10 X, it's like, yeah, I'm not meeting today. <laughs> I'm not taking that meeting. Right. And, and, and like, that's, I've been very blessed to be around a lot of wealth. Some of it professional sport. Some of it is, you know, Texas oil money and it is night and day. Yeah. Um, Texas oil money don't, 
they don't take meetings. Like if if it's a if we don't, they don't take non transactional meetings. So if I'm not here to pick up a check, if I'm not here to give a check, if I'm not here mm. to give a dividend back, we can't Zoom, FaceTime, text, email. But you're not getting me. Right. I may send somebody, but you're not getting me. That's what fu wow. money is. A non transit. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I want to work to get to that point where hey, look. It has to be That's a it. transactional <laughs> meeting <laughs> in order for us to compensate. <laughs> but but think but think about it though. So so not only is it natural in life the same way that the the higher you escalate it in your career, in your faith, in yeah. your hobby, right? So so let's just take the hobby. The, the better you got at bowling, you didn't hang out with the scrub Monday night bowlers. <laughs> like they they no longer became your circle of influence. So if Wednesday night is the pro league night at the bowling alley, right. your colleagues are all pro league Wednesday night guys. Yeah. So so when you say I don't take non transactional meetings to the Monday night bowler, they're like, that guy's a snob. Mm-hmm. When you say it to the winds in that boat, they're like, shit, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so, and so it, I mean, all, all of our life, it all works together if we're slow enough to notice how everything is tied to, to, to everything else. Wow. Okay. My producer just, Isaac just told me we've got three minutes, but you, but. So let's let's real quick. Three minutes. Come on, baby. We going. I know, man. I, I, this guy's killing me. Look, look. This hey, guy's killing me. Hey, it, it, I, I wish I could control <laughs> it, but he just gave me the three. I'm like, oh, dang. Uh, um, <laughs> okay, so real quick, the the item that you mentioned that you wanted 20 minutes for to talk about, but, but we still want to put it out in the atmosphere. Help, help okay. me understand what it is and, and, and where you're at with it. So I came up with a, a new uh, pr- concept. I don't know what to call it, product, course. It, it may end up being a course. Um, I find that most conversations, difficult things are easy to understand when they're relational like this. Right? Yeah, yeah. So the idea for this course, uh, I just wrote it down. I don't have it memorized yet, is, is called the Gridiron Wealth Strategy. Become the head, co- become the head coach of your capital. So what I do hmm. is I, I just, just this morning, right? And and we, I, I, to tell you, engineer, I, I'll pay for the overtime. We gotta get this thing going. <laughs> um, this morning, I just kind of mapped out these twelve, the twelve steps required, and the twelve steps that I'm taking. Right. So again, I don't. I'm on my path to wealth. I'm, you know, like well along my path. Yeah. I'm not claiming, you know, like I'm not on the Forbes list. I'm not trying to act like. Right. You right. know, I got all of life figured out <laughs> but at the but at the same time i'm far enough along to say i see if i'm on step 12 if i'm on, if I'm on step eight out of 12 yeah. i see the seven steps here i can see those last four steps like yeah. I, I i see now what i need to do so um i'll just run through them pretty quick so the first step is decide what success is and so what I, let me take a step back what i'm doing here is i'm speaking from a wealth accumulation standpoint, and this is so important to our community. That's why I was like, we just, I just want to put this out and yeah. we can pick it back up if we have time. But so I'm speaking in a wealth accumulation space. I'm also speaking through the lens of pro football. So it's very, mm. it's very easy to pick up and put down. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to talk over nobody's head. So the first thing is decide, decide what success is, stick it on the wall, reference it daily but don't obsess over it. And so the same way that you go into a locker room, if a division mm. championship or Super Bowl is a goal, the goal is there, but you don't just stare at it all day. You don't say right, like right. in the locker room. You just what you have is a point of reference. So you have to decide what's most important to you. So is it, you know, is it making a lot of money? Is it being a six figure earner? Is it being a millionaire? Is it like for me, it's generational wealth. Like my yeah. goal is to create four levels of wealth. Um, my parents and then, you know, my kids and grandkids, like that is my goal. And so understanding that, you know, the near side of your goal, the closer you'll get, if you've got a long, ambitious goal, it's going to take you a long time to get there. So yeah. the point I have from a football perspective is, you know, if your goal is to um, to be the team that wins the most home games. Yeah. Right. And that's then that's your way of thinking about if I can win eight home games a year. That's happening. Right. Well, when you think of super successful NFL teams, you don't think of the 
Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals in the last 10 years are the fifth winningest home team in the NFL. Wow. So that is an exercise to say you may want to adjust. So if your goal is to be a six-figure earner, that ain't going to get you that far mm-hmm. if, if you've got ambitious goals. Right? Yeah. So just winning home games is cool, but, I mean, how 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 are the Cardinals doing? You know right, what I'm saying? Right, like, yeah. not great. <laughs> right? So um, so the, the next step I have off of that is before you finalize your decision, travel. Like, travel is so key. Um, see what's out there in the world. You only know what you've experienced. As a, now as a, the football spin on that is as a GA or as an intern, you want to intern in several different organizations. You don't want to just intern with one club. And, you know, all you know is the way that that club exercises and runs their facility. And so right. you want to be able to experience a number of different places. Um, so what I have behind that is, you know, you'll learn different styles of play. You'll better understand, you know, and, le- and you want to learn from the gamut. And so from a financial perspective, you want to learn from the Robert Kiyosaki, but you want to learn all the way to the, the Dave, what's the guy, Dave Ramsey. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, there are some folks who speak to Robert Kiyosaki, leverage debt, leverage debt, leverage debt. There are some people who, who speak to Dave Ramsey and don't own a car till you pay it off. Mm-hmm. And all, right? So no matter where you are, yeah. if your goal is to learn the money game, you need to learn the the entire the game. The entire game, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's once. I've, I've, got, I've got quite a few more. I'm not sure how we are on time. I want to be respectful of you guys. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay, cool. So the second one is um, watch and simulate games to decide where your natural strengths are. And so this is one of those hacks where if you if you if you can slow down enough, the hack is in front of you. So when you go to ESPN Classics and you're watching a game that you don't remember who won the game, that's what you want to watch. So again, as a coach, like if I were to de- if I were to develop a young coach now, I would say sit in ESPN Classic yeah. and watch the peach bowl from 91 right you don't know who won the game but when it's 31 hit pause and think to yourself what play would i run Mm. right and that's great simulation and so oh no he ran something else well let me rewind it and see why he made that choice wait who's that coach oh that's bobby bowden oh he's one of the winningest coaches right so it's like (laughs) well wait a minute so that guy probably isn't wrong I'm learned I was probably wrong, but you have to be willing enough to be wrong enough to understand why different guys made different choices. Now the other side to that hack, and this is where it kind of gets crazy if you're willing to like be creative enough, is the benefit of learning that way yeah. is you also you also get you get 31 from the offensive perspective, but you also get 31 from the defensive perspective. Mm-hmm. So you can say, okay, this is what Florida State did. Let's see what, you know, like Jordan State did and then, right. or Jordan Tech. And then so you can kind of see like both sides of the coin. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and then also I feel like that gives you, um, you know, the opportunity to understand how you like to make money. Right. And so one of the things I think is, is really big is understanding. Are you a Wendy's 99 cent burger earner or are you a steakhouse earner? Right. Oh, and there's man. nothing wrong with either one. Right, so so you can you can sell you know volume and sell a hundred dollar burgers, or you can mm. sell five twenty dollar steak burgers. Yeah, right? and so whichever one you naturally gravitate towards, you need to understand that. Um, the next one is make it. This one's quick. Make a declaration. Decide at that point: Am I an offensive guy or am I a defensive guy? Right? Am I an earner or am I a spender? And there's nothing wrong with being either one, but you got to know who you are. Because you know that 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 part, although it's short, kind of pins down the rest of this whole deal. So step four is develop your scheme. So you know lead with your natural strength, design your schematic that um, you use to achieve your first principle. Understand that like the money game, football is about assignment and alignment. And that's kind of going back to what I was talking about playing the four three versus the three four. Mm-hmm. Neither deep. I mean, both defenses will get you stops if you put people in the right position. Yeah. Right. And so just like with earning, right. So, you know, ha- having a, you know, high volume, low margin business will earn you the same way as uh, a low, low volume, high margin. It's just, they come in different ways. So you got to understand, you know, can you stomach, 
you know, going yeah, through yeah, which one you without can do. closing the deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. You got to be able to understand that. So, um, and then the example I use there is, is the 1999 Rams, which was the greatest show on turf. Isaac Bruce, yep. uh, uh, big game, Tory Hunt, uh, Terry Holt, um, um, Kurt Warner, yeah. right. That was offense. But then the very next year was the 2000 Ravens with Ray Lewis oh, and yeah. you know, Ed Reed, that defense, right? <laughs> so one was offensive, one was Super Bowl, one was defensive. Mm. You can get there with both, but you got to know as a coach which one you are, ah. right? But I go, um, my, my question, though, in that thought, though, as yeah. a coach, can you be both or can you master both, right? You know, so that you can be flexible in either either situation. Yeah, so it's it's so funny you say that. I put that further down. I think I have it in number nine. But when you get to that place of like mastery, you look at Bill Bill, Bill Belichick is a defensive coach. Yeah. Like he's a defensive first guy. It's London under Parcells. He's a defensive guy. But his IQ, he got to the point of mastery to where he's also a utopian offensive guy, <laughs> right? And so it's like. You know, he, he became, again, we talked about, you know, the Steve Jobs, the unicorns. Yeah. He became a unicorn. He truly is a unicorn. So the answer is yes. They're just so far and few between that we kind of put them on a special shelf. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the next one is decide, and we kind of talked about this, but decide your style of play. Do you like to dink and dunk? Do you like to you know, kind of check down, check down, check down the way the Titans kind of play? Mm -hmm. Or do you like to just kind of strike it like the Rams, right? So the Rams now, it's either yeah. incomplete or it's a touchdown. There's no in-between. Yep. Um, now, the next one is really key, and you kind of touched on this earlier. Now you have to build out your coaching roster, right? So it's mm -hmm. one thing to be the head coach. you got to get assistant coaches and coordinators under you, right? So now that you know what kind of game you want to play, and before you begin building your player roster, Decide who will develop your talent. Put those coaches in proper positions. And I've got a few examples of, you know, earning coaches, saving coaches, and investing coaches that I kind of muse myself after. Yeah. And then the same thing with offense, defense, and special teams, right? Um, now, this is a big one. Like any, like any other kind of talent, understand you must invest in your coaches. Nothing in life is free. Mm -hmm. Books, courses, conferences – this is where most people misstep. They want a championship team, but they're only willing to pay for Pee Wee League talent coaches. Pee Wee League guys are volunteers. <laughs> so you want to go to the Super Bowl with a guy who's a plumber during the day? Right. Like, no, you want a professional coach. <laughs> yeah. And I don't mean that. I don't mean that. I don't mean like buy into people's coaching. I'm not saying like, you know, you need to follow mentors. What I'm saying is model and muse people who are this is all i do right so like for example um who's an example so uh jl collins yeah. jl collins is a is a is a vanguard investor that's vanguard so it so investing is his sweet spot vanguard investing is all that he works yeah he's not he, he's not going to talk to you about earning he's not going to talk to you about saving he's going to talk to you about investing right so you want all-star mvp focal coaches developing your talent so the question you may ask is, you know, who is that talent? Um, and, you know, your active roster are your players. Mm -hmm. Your players in building your wealth are your wealth vehicles, your assets, right? So, you know, understand, now that you understand your coaching staff and you understand the style of game you want to play, now you need to identify the type of players. And so you've got a Julio Jones who is super athletic, super long, can catch every ball. Then you've got a Tariq Hill, who is short, scat back, throw a lot of screens. He's elusive, yeah. right? And the difference, the difference I will make with that is the difference between investing in real estate and investing in the stock market. They're night and day. Yeah, You've got to understand what kind of player you want on your roster, <laughs> yeah. right? And so can you deal with cutting an $80,000 check and sure, making 20% return, but you're not going to make it for five or six months. Mm -hmm. Or can you deal with the everyday slip of the market going up and down, going up and down? Pfizer does this. The president has COVID virus. That yep. impact, right? So it's like you got to be able to understand what type of players. And by players, I mean, you know, capital building assets you want on your team as you build your team. Ah. Um, so number seven is manufacture a win. 
And what I mean by manufacture a win is as a coach, you know, you set really ambitious and audacious goals. But sometimes those goals are so outstanding yeah. that you're not it's gonna take a while to get there, right? So just the idea of ending practice with a touchdown, that's manufacturing a win. Or uh. kicking a field goal to end your walkthrough, right? So that that's giving yourself mental manufacture wins. All right, the next one is evaluate your team relentlessly, and that includes firing yourself if necessary. So as a head coach, you may say, you know what? I'm the head coach, but I'm also going to double back as a quarterback coach. But your quarterback is trash, fire yourself. <laughs> go, get, go get a quarterback coach, right? So, so you may be saying like, okay, I've got this going. I've got my model going. I'm going to manage my investments. I'm going to, you know, day trade on Robin Hood. Right. But you suck at it. So fire yourself. <laughs> <laughs> your goal is not to like, you know, like make more money than you did yesterday. Your goal is to build wealth. So the idea, the idea of Robin Hood is, is like the easiest, I don't want to use the word scam, but like prepackaged bamboozle ever. Mm. So you think for a second, and this is where ego gets in the way. I'm in Houston, Texas. You're in Atlanta. The fact that me or you thinks that based on whatever information that we can pay for or find on the internet, that we know more about Wall Street than the people who are wrong every day on Wall Street? How does that even make sense? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not crapping on Robin Hood. I get it, right? So it's like I've got, you know, my I got stocks at Apple, I got stocks in Tesla. I mean, I'm I'm there. Yeah. But the idea of of a day trader outwitting the stock market yes. when people who work a hundred hours a week on Wall Street get it wrong all day, every day. <laughs> so you gotta you gotta take the ego out and say, you know what, I need to fire this quarterback coach who who happens to also be me. <laughs> and go hire a quarterback coach. So because my end goal is not for me to be right, but for us to move forward. And again, that goes back to that ego thing. You got to mm. check your ego. All right. So um, our, our last couple are now it's time to build out the rest of your front office. And so you're the head coach, you, you know, presumably head coach GM, because you're also making choices. Yeah. Now you need a director of personnel. You need a uh, strength conditioning guy. You need a dietitian, right? So you need, a lawyer, you need your CPA, you need a certified financial planner. You need you need to again undergird your front office because you're playing the forever game. Mm. Um the next one is um work the plan and plan to work. Know when to adjust your plan, know when to call a timeout, and great coaches always earn their check in the second half. That's when you make adjustments as a coach, right? So understanding I need to make adjustments. Um we talked earlier about momentum. You know, the, my definition of compounding is consistency plus momentum. And then the last one is, you know, play the game to win versus playing the game not to lose. Mm. And there are so many times when you see teams that are up by 15, up by 20, they put their twos in, they run in the ball, and before you know it, they got to put their ones back in because they let this 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 lead evaporate yeah. instead of com- you know, completing the team, instead of finishing the team completely and putting the game out of hand. They just play not to lose. And, you know, they're hoping that the time on the clock runs out before the other team can catch up versus completely, completely defeating the other team. So I just I just kind of made that up this morning. I came home from the gym. I was just kind of like, man, I wonder just how can I get this type of information? This How can I get people to think differently about money, about wealth creation? How do we take the 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 stench off of wealth? When ultimately, as a people, we're so disadvantaged because it's the one thing missing, and it's the one thing we don't want to talk about. Yeah, but there, there's not there's nothing else in our life that we have a lot of that we don't talk about. It's true. You know, yeah, you, you got a kid who's an all A kid. You can't shut that parent up. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how much you want to, like, will you be just be quiet about your child? I, I get it. The kid's smart. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. Right. But money, oh, we can't, we can't talk about. It. We don't, we can't, oh, we, we don't talk about that. Well, you typically don't talk about things you don't have. You don't have, or you, or you don't fully understand um, your level of comfort mm-hmm. in having a dialogue about it. You know, we we fear sounding stupid or looking as if we don't know it all. Um, I think I think what you're developing is valuable um 
and a good start. I would, uh, a couple things, I had a question. So as you were going through your 12, how do you keep, as you're having your, you know, your, 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 your person work through these 12, how do you help them keep their end goal in the forefront of their mind? Right, because they always have to keep their, that, that the end goal is building wealth. They, that has to stick there because if you're going through 12 steps, somebody can, can lose, lose what that end goal is. And that, because that end goal, in essence, is, their, is, their moment, is, is what's keeping them going, knowing that they, they want to build wealth. That, that's, that's energizing them. So I would just try to figure out how do you help them keep that end goal in mind as they're working through the steps. So it keeps it keeps them charged. Yeah. So, well, so so it's funny you say that. So the very first the very first principle was decide what success is, stick it on the wall. Yeah. Reference okay. it daily, yep. but don't obsess. And so, like that that's the very first thing is you you can't hit a target that you don't establish. Yep. Right. And the easiest way to go off target is to take your eyes off the target. So I'm not going to stare. So it, it's it's no different than you know again being in a locker room preseason off season. Our goal is a conference championship. I look at it every – I don't stare at it all. Day. I got, I got to take myself back and go put the yeah. work in. But every day when I walk into that, to that locker room, my goal is right in front of me, conference championship. Oh, I like that. And so, you know, that's the first thing. The second thing for me um, is, you know, I have these kind of breath thoughts I keep. Yeah. And one of them is, you know, I'm playing a forever game. And so – you close a big deal and there's the money there. Do you go buy the e-bike that you could very well write off, off under your company, right? Yeah. It, it's a company expense. We're doing, you know, R and D and whatever. Mm. Do you buy the electric bike or do you pay yourself a dividend and go put some money, you know, into another business? I'm playing a forever game. Yeah. Right. And so the forever game for me as a spender talks me off the ledge of making, you know, poor financial decisions. And the other thing too, and I'll kind of say this to close my, my thought on it is um, as a people, one of the things I want us to experience mm-hmm. is making non, non painful financial decisions. I'm going to put myself out there, hmm. right? I, I don't, you know, I ask nobody, you know, <laughs> indict themselves. I've bought so many vehicles where it's like, how much? Ooh. Like, Lord, let me, you sounded it. Just, right. Oh, that thing about to stain, right? <laughs> I can't wait. And I, 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 I'm driving a work truck now. It, it's a clunker. It, it drives, it rolls, right? So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm also one of those guys who are going to drive it to stop driving. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but one of my biggest ego, again, being honest about my ego, one of my biggest ego goals is to make my next truck purchase and not bat an eye. Like that's yeah. when you know you can afford it. Yep. Yeah. But that's when you know you can afford it, right? So, so, so when you go down the 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 aisle at the grocery store, and it's your favorite popcorn, it's you know extra butter. Mm-hmm. Then they've got the you know the the Circle K version. <laughs> you don't you don't you don't cringe when you buy the extra butter, right? Because you can afford it. Afford it. Because you can afford it. <laughs> you, can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But. But when you but when you at Vic and Anthony's, you at you know what I'm saying Houston, right, and, right, and 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 the and the seventy five dollar t uh, tomahawk <laughs> bone in, and that bill coming, you like, oh, you couldn't afford it, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Should have took it out back, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my goodness, so, <laughs> that, that that is. That is like from an ego perspective, I want to, I can't wait to experience making my next truck purchase and yeah. not feeling anything. And right. Oh, yeah. But then, but then selfishly, I can't wait for us as a people to experience that. It is so liberating. But you, you know, I can't wait for that. Coach Cam, and I, I know we got to go, but I, we as a, a as a people have to get to a point where we fully understand that we deserve it, right? Because if if you if if you don't have the mindset that you deserve those things, it'll always yeah. hurt. It'll always sting. You'll never get to a point where you're like, 
where, where, where you'll be able to walk in and pay for something and, and, and it doesn't impact you <laughs> negatively. We have to get to a point where we deserve it and, and understand that, no, I, I deserve this. I, I work hard and I can afford it. I've done all the steps that I needed to do. Um, we'll, get, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there as a people, but it's, it's and I, I think it's. No, oh, it, 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 it's conversations like this. It's taking exactly. your cool. It's going back to your first question. How do you take your cool off and have an authentic conversation? Exactly. And it's, it's, it's coming, it's coming to these conversations ego less, right? I mean, I can sit there and act like I could afford every, I, 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 I can't. And right. I've been burned by it. I've, I've learned from those decisions. And that's the other thing too, as a competitive person, you may beat me. You're not going to beat me the same way twice. Nope. Right. <laughs> and so as I began to rebuild myself, it was like, okay, now I understand what affordability calculators. I mean, I'll say, oh, it says, nah, I ain't worried about it. They tripping out. <laughs> they don't know me. I'm about to, right. And so it's like, nah, bro. Yeah. You can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> Put your ego in check. You just can't afford Put it. Put your ego in check. You can't afford it. <laughs> oh, man. So true, man. You know what we we could we could talk we could talk forever, but um, you know what I w- I want to say thank you. This was an awesome conversation. Um, and on, on behalf of my wife, you know what we wish you much 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 success. Um, and, and and I can say this with confidence. If I know if I'm if I'm ever in Houston, I know someone I can come and hang out with. And if you're ever yeah, in, in Atlanta, yeah. man, dude, it, it ain't nothing but a word, right? So yeah. Um, I do appreciate it. This will not be the last conversation. Trust you me. It will not be. Um, and man, I, I just, I, I like, like what you said. I, I really, really do. Um, so I, I hope my audience, our audience can take all the nuggets, all the gems that you provided, and at, at minimum, begin to formulate where they want to go and what they want to do, whether it's building a company, whether it's becoming a consultant, whether it's going to law school, whether it's becoming a doctor, but taking those, these, these, these concepts that, that you've presented and, and actually bettering their life and, and figuring out what success means to them and knowing what, when they say generational wealth, to you and I, it may be one thing, but to them it may mean another and that it's okay for them to go after their dreams and to go for what they, 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 know, they know they want to get to. Um, but as my wife and I always say, In parting, we like to tell our folks to take care, be blessed, and be a blessing.